Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this lesson we're going to study unit rates. And what is a unit rate? It is a rate where the second term of the rate is 1, unit, okay? Here's some examples, for example, $8.25 per 1 hour. Or we might say it's just $8.25 per hour, but we, name, we mean per 1 hour. This 1 hour makes it the unit rate. It's another 70 miles per hour, but it means per 1 hour, so it is a unit rate. Or $12 per kilogram, per 1 kilogram it means. Now, to calculate the unit rate from some other rate that is not a unit rate, you simply divide. For example, if you have 88 miles per 4 gallons, or 88 miles to 4 gallons, then we do the division here. Let me write this first using the division line. 88 miles divided by 4 gallons. And then 88 divided by 4 is 22. And then we get our unit as miles per gallons. Miles per gallon. So this is now 20, 22 miles per 1 gallon unit rate. Or if we have 12 hearts to 5 stars, let's say you're making a pattern and you are drawing 12 stars, 12 hearts to each 5 stars. It's not that you really want to calculate a unit rate for this situation, but you can. If I, if I do that, then I divide 12 divided by 5. So I get 12 fifths hearts per star. Of course, this is now a mixed number. It is 2 and 2 fifths hearts per star. It's a little convoluted example, I know. It is just to illustrate that this is how you technically do it. You divide and then you get those this many hearts per one star. Find the unit rate here. You walk half a mile in one fourth of an hour. And okay, since we want the unit rate, we are looking for how many miles in one hour, okay? How many miles in one hour? And this is one fourth of an hour, it's 15 minutes. If you walk half a mile in 15 minutes, then in half an hour you would walk a mile. And in an hour you would walk two miles, right? So the answer is two miles per one hour, right? We just figured it out. But I want to also show you that the division still works. If I write it as half a mile per one-fourth of an hour, I can still use division to find the unit rate. Okay, I just take one-half divi divided by one-fourth. One-half divided by one-fourth. And then that's going to be miles per hour. This many miles per hour. And now in fraction division, you remember how that was done? You need to remember by this point. The division changes into a multiplication, and then this changes into its reciprocal number, which is 4. So it is going to be half times 4 miles per hour, or 2 miles per hour, of course. So division works always for finding the unit rate, but sometimes like in this case, we figured it out by multiplying because it was a fractional part of an hour. Another one, we have a fractional part of an hour. You walk two-fifths of a mile in 25 minutes. Let me show you how to solve this one. Okay, let's write the rate here. My goal is to get to so many miles per one hour, or 60 minutes. But 25 minutes doesn't go evenly to 60 minutes. I cannot therefore simply multiply this by 2 or something easy like that. But what I will do is I will find the rate per 5 minutes first. And then from there I go to the 60 minutes. Okay, to find the rate per 5 minutes would be of course just one fifth as much, right? So I divide by 5. Two fifths divided by 5. Okay, if your fraction math is not quite clear, let me divide it here. Two-fifths divided by five is the same as two-fifths times one-fifth. Okay, 
So we get 2 over 25 miles per 5 minutes if somebody is walking this slowly. It's a slow rate of walking. And now, from here to here, I would multiply by 12, right? 12 times this number, 12 times this fraction. So I get 12 times 2 is 24. 24 over 25 miles per 60 minutes. So this is now the unit rate. 60 minutes is equal to 1 hour, of course. So we get 24 over 25 miles per hour. You could also maybe write this as a decimal. This would be the same as 96 over 100 miles per hour, which is 0 0.96 miles per hour, almost one mile per hour, slow walking. A bird can fly 2,450 kilometers in 20 days. I hope this is reasonable amount I didn't actually check. Now, how many days would it need to fly 1,500 kilometers? This is a typical problem where we would use a proportion. But today I'm going to solve it not using a proportion, but using a unit rate. Because that's a pretty natural way of thinking about it. You would just simply calculate the kilometers per one day, unit rate, and then figure out the other part. So let's say I put here unit rate, 2450 kilometers per 20 days. Okay, I'm going to take half of that first to get 10 days. And that would be 1,225 kilometers per 10 days. And then it's easy to divide by 10. Okay, it's going to be 122.5 kilometers per day. That's the unit rate. And now it's asking, okay, how many days would it need to fly 1,500 kilometers? If it is this many kilometers in one day, then how many days for 1,500 kilometers? Okay, and to do that, you just check how many times does this amount go into 1,500, or you divide, you use basic division, 1,500 kilometers divided by that unit rate. And if you're not sure what to do, if you're not sure that, oh, maybe I should multiply those numbers, you also notice that multiplication gives you too big of an answer, okay? So we divide this, and I did, and the answer is about 12.24 days. Okay, about 12 and one fourth days. Here, find the unit rate first of all, then we're gonna plot something, we're gonna write an equation. Okay, find the unit rate, T means time, D means distance. We are back to the distance and time and speed. And distance is in meters, time is measured in seconds. S is seconds. And at zero seconds, there's no movement, the distance is zero. But at six seconds, this thing or person, whatever, has gone 120 meters. What's the unit rate would mean, like I said, per one, in this case, one second. How many meters per one second? Because we are talking about speed. It is meters per second, okay? It's not seconds per meters. It's meters per, per second. So that's why I put one second, not one meter. And uh, of course, you can easily see if in six seconds, 120 meters, then in one second, one sixth of that number, or 20 meters. The unit rate is 20 meters per second. It's a speed, okay? Speed is a type of rate. Now, to write an equation of this and to draw that or plot that in the coordinate plane, in speed, time, and distance, we usually have time as our x-axis, so to speak, horizontal axis. It's not x-axis, it's now called t-axis and then distance goes here on the vertical axis. And this unit rate becomes the slope of the line. And therefore we will get an equation. Okay, you might consider it's either going to be t equals 20d or d equals 20t. If you don't remember how to do it, you can write both of those and think about it. 
which one would it be? Which one is the correct equation? Okay, just check that it matches with your table. If t is 1, then will you get 20 as your distance? If t is 1 here, then 1 equals 20 times some number. I will not get 20 here. 20 times 20 would be 400. So this is the one that does not work, okay? It is this one, d equals 20t. Just like if you're familiar with plotting graphs with the y and x, you always have y equals something x. Okay, so here the vertical axis d equals something t. That's our equation. And now we're going to plot it. I need two points to plot it, right? Origin is 1, 0, 0. And then I need to choose a scale too for the axis. So 1, 2, 3 would work here. And maybe, let's say if I put 10 here, 20 here. And then this unit rate 1, 20 will work as my second point. Right? And now plot the line. The main thing I want you to keep in mind is that the unit rate is also the slope. 20 is the slope. And on the graph, there's the point 1 and something, okay? 1, 20 is the point signifying to us the unit rate, also signifying to us the slope. Okay, well, done with this, and I hope it was helpful.